I'm standing at the intersection of Spiritualist Street and Mediumship Way because I'm in a psychic town. This place is the psychic capital of the world. Death is not final. We continue after we leave here. You hear like from people who grew up around here and they're like, oh, freaky stuff happens out there. This is definitely an energy bank. Hundreds of psychics live here. They have their own rules, psychic school, and even religion. Sometimes they don't believe, but by the time they leave, they've seen enough that they do. To them, the fact that they can talk to spirits is proof that even after we die, we're not really gone. I had a gentleman come through for Zach who he made the inclination that he would know you. People are drawn here, and quite often they get here and they find home. I can walk around and a person looks at me and I look at that person and it's like, yeah, you got what I have and I have what you got. People say, oh, that's witchcraft or that's devil. No, it ain't the devil. I think it comes down to if you believe in coincidence or not. Right now we're in Central Florida. We're going to Casadega, also called the psychic capital of the world. About 600 people live here full time, and most of them claim to have some sort of psychic abilities. The town was started in 1894 and is said to be built around a natural energy vortex, which is why all of these psychics are so in tune with their powers. Casadega's psychic reputation draws in thousands of visitors every year. The town offers a bunch of tours, so I'm joining the most popular one, the Encounter Spirits Night Tour. And I got an orb right up here already. Take pictures, guys. Take pictures up around rooftops. Take them into open areas. Turn around, take them behind you. They're not gonna stand and pose for you. Cameras will malfunction, folks, by the way. We're on a spirit orb tour. We're walking around taking flash photos of different buildings and different things in the hopes that we can capture some orbs, which I guess are just spirits, but in ball form. House on the left, I always get stuff up around the rooftops. This is the tree that will not die. One of the other tour guides has gotten faces in that upstairs window. Don, what can you tell me about this photo? Okay. This almost looks like there's some kind of light source coming up. Maybe you caught the tail of somebody's flash, but this one up here, that's an energy band. See how it comes together and then gets wide again? And what is an energy band? That is just a different way that spirit can manifest in your pictures. Could this be a spirit or do I just need to get a new phone? All right, what about that one up on the top there? It's off you the think moon. that's off yep, the moon? I do. Okay. It's a light refraction off the moon, sorry. Okay. No, no go. Not any of them. Are you enjoying the tour tonight? I am. Have you always been interested in spirits? I think I'm one of those ones that I'm still trying to figure out if I believe. I'm looking for that experience that pushes me over that edge that makes me believe. What are your thoughts on all the spiritual stuff? Being somebody who doesn't know exactly what they believe in, like it's cool to see just different sides of coins from what maybe you have grown up with. I grew up here, so not in Casadega, but in Florida. So you always hear like from people who grew up around here and they're like, oh, freaky stuff happens out there. So you kind of get a big mixed bag. We're gonna make our way over to the portal tree. Our tour guide, Don wants us to feel Casadega's higher energy firsthand. So she takes us down to the swamp to stand in between two palms known as the portal trees. If you were to group the different kinds of people who are taking these tours, is it people who are purely here for entertainment, people who are looking for answers? Like, what kind of people are coming to Casadega? All of it. There are people here just to see the novelty of it. You have skeptics that come here, just, you know, which I really like because I've had quite a few people walk in skeptical and didn't leave quite so skeptical. You do have seekers that come here, people that are mediums themselves. And that's the thing about Casadega. People are drawn here. And quite often they get here and they find home. So I just stood in between the portal trees and took my spirit orb photos. After reviewing the images that Dawn took, I guess I was just covered in white orbs, which means that potentially there were spirits there. The tour was fine, but I still want to see some more personal psychic work, so I'm linking up with Lori and Sydney Carter. They're two mediums in town who hold a weekly messaging service where they claim they can communicate with your dead loved ones. 
My name's Lori Carter. This is Sydney, and we are both psychic spiritualist mediums at Casadega Spiritualist Camp. We both are clairvoyants. We see, we feel, we know, and we hear. We just connect with the spirit around you and work with that spirit. Yeah. I just want to come to this gentleman right here. As we get into your vibration, I do have an elderly woman in spirit. Could be mom. I see her wearing a dress and she has a full apron on. And she keeps making me aware of the tips of her finger. Maybe she was anemic or something like that. I'd like to come to the gentleman. I have two gentlemen who are with you. Quite fair skinned, blue eyes. And for some reason, I'm getting Christmas. I don't know if someone's having a birthday around Christmas or someone passed at Christmas. Thank you. My birthday. It's pretty impressive watching Lori and Sydney do these rapid fire readings. Maybe she break tea. Some of the information they're saying is pretty random. I'm being shown a turtle for you. But some things are really resonating with people. The gentleman who's with her, he does. It's he brings you sunflowers, which is the big Oh my god. <laughs> for spiritualism and he is also bringing sunflowers to you and he wants you to look at the light a little bit more. <laughs> and the happiness that you do have. My grandfather's favorite flower that passed away was a sunflower. Oh. <laughs> You're welcome. I feel like she ruled everything with an iron fist. And boy, oh boy, she's mad at you. I just feel like I have to give it to you. Why are you not stepping into your own? Why are you not doing it? Set the intention, do it. I'm gonna leave that with love and blessing. Yeah. Thank you. How was that for you? Yo, that was really intense, I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, it was hard to hear the fact that my grandmother was mad at me because I haven't took action is what I wanted to do. I was actually gonna like, you know, like shed a tear, but something told me to hold back, you know? I, I didn't want to look like a punk in front of me, but, but yes, like, it's real, it's real. That woman was amazing. When she came, that's why I almost fell apart in there. Before this, had you gotten readings before? Like what she did? Mm -hmm. Never. And never because I've always thought it was like something to do with people say, oh, that's witchcraft or that's devil. No, it ain't the devil. It's a, it's a connection. It's a cleaning. This place brought a lot of inner peace in me. Mm -hmm. Guys, you don't understand. I, I don't want to offend you in any way, mm -hmm. but I was like, is this real? Is this, you no, know? No, I get it. God has gifted you with a talent that you don't, I don't even know that you know that you have. And I don't know how to thank you because mm -hmm. you really connected me with this whole spiritual world. And I, thank you. Mm, thank you so much. How did you two find yourselves in Casadega? I was seeing spirit. Hell yeah. And mom wanted to find a teacher. As I realized that yes, I did see spirit too when I was younger, but my parents told me no. When Sydney saw a spirit, we never told her no. I don't know if she's thankful or what for that, but here we are. <laughs> And there is curriculum. I mean, there are different things that we have got to study. It takes four to six years to become a certified medium, so it's not easy. Four to six years is no joke, and Lori wants me to see the bookstore, which offers a variety of psychic materials for their studies. Pick one out that you resonate to, and I'm gonna take this one. Okay. And first you gotta ask, did you pick one out yet? Um, sorry. Uh this one. Okay, perfect. And so what you do is you got to find out what is yes. Show me yes. Show me yes. And so mine is circling. What's yours doing? Mine's darting back and forth. Okay. And so stop. Show me no. Show me no. Mine's going back and forth. It's going the other way now. And so stop. And what we do is we ask a question. Did you, wait, sorry, how did you get yours to stop? I said stop. And it just did? Yeah. Stop. Yeah. That'll do. We're perusing the store and there's so many different things going on. There's like Aruveda and there's and so, fairy magic. And how does this all kind of coalesce into this so one thing? Spiritualists allow people to believe what they want to believe. I don't feel like any religion is wrong. I think it matters what resonates with your soul. So can you just kind of break down what spiritualism is? Spiritualism is essentially the belief in a higher source. So for me, it's God. For others, they might call it infinite intelligence. It is also the understanding that communication with the dead is true. Lori and Sydney clearly make an impact in their services, and I feel kind of left out that I didn't have a similar experience. 
So after the messaging service, Sydney invites me back to her place to give me a one-on-one -on -one reading. Tell me a few things about myself or some things that you are tuned into that you shouldn't know, but you do. Absolutely. What's fun is you've had a gentleman in spirit who's been around you all day since you got here. And who is this gentleman? I'd probably put him in um, 60s age range. He definitely would have passed from something going on with his chest. I do feel like it's more heart. And I do know he would have had some issues with his digestive system as well, all the way from top to bottom. I know he has blue eyes and I'd say he's, I wanna put him over six foot. He feels quite tall to me. And it's interesting because I know he would have been in the military. I do feel like he's in a family line. Um, and why is he so obsessed with me? I don't know if I would say obsessed, but he's definitely around you. And I feel like it's because he wants to give you some guidance about where you're going in the next steps. So what I wanna say is this gentleman is telling you to be mindful of your relationships and who you are actually giving your heart to. And how would he know this? Like, who is this random man? I'm gonna say, ask your mom. We can ask her right now. Go for it. Hey, sweetie, you okay? Yeah, I'm good, Mom. I'm in the middle of a reading. Do you want to tell her what? Yeah, who I this can. man is? Yeah. I had a gentleman come through for Zach who he made the inclination that he would know you. And so he's about six foot. I would say um, he was in the military when he was younger. I want to say would have. This guy knows me? Yeah, I do feel like this is somebody who would be in the family. Huh, that's interesting. My dad was in the military. He gave me 65. My dad was 66 exactly when he died. He okay. was six feet tall. He had green eyes. He showed me his eyes and they looked blue to me, so I don't want to change it to green, but I know that they're fair eyes. I know that they're not brown eyes. He would have had more olive tone skin, and I feel my like he... Olive. I'm okay. going to say this is probably my dad. Okay, well, dad is coming through to talk to Zach today, and he's been with him since Zach got here. Oh, this is a little odd. Okay, well, I guess we've... We've craft. discovered who he is. Thank you, Jane. Whenever she's described him to me, mm -hmm. I've heard he was like, like neglectful mm -hmm. and like toxic. So when they cross over, like, do you have like a reckoning? Do you become more empathetic as a spirit? This gentleman, he didn't present himself as a lovey-dovey kind of guy. He told me he was a strong man, but it was also important to him to let you know that it was okay to drop your guard a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it very well could be because that was something he didn't do when he was here in the physical. It can take up to six years to become a certified medium with the Casadega Spiritualist Camp, and it's not cheap either, with classes normally $50 a pop. Lucky for me, they're letting me audit one today in the temple, so I guess we'll see how good my psychic skills are. I'm Reverend Maida Jones. I'm a medium and a minister here in the camp. They call these development classes, but I always feel like maybe we should call them retrieval classes. We come into this life knowing this sort of thing. Children are very aware. And then little by little, we get discouraged. You learn that, you know, if you do say something, maybe you're a little weird. It really isn't about developing it. It's always been there, and we're trying to get it back. My name's Ron. I've been having so-called psychic experiences since I was a child. And uh, I'm here trying to learn how to use them, how to turn them on and make them better. I think most of us want to use them for good of some kind whatever that might be. Hi, I'm Jen. I have been coming for about two months or so. I've been interested in this stuff for a very long time, but now I'm actually here to learn as much as I possibly can and hone the skills by all of these lovely people. Hi, my name is Javon. I've been experiencing things since I was little, and I happened to stop by at Casadega like two years ago, and then all of a sudden I was kind of welcome into living here, so now I'm living here and kind of developing and trying to work on my gifts. You're gonna actually try to pick up on someone's deceased loved one. You're gonna find a partner. And I always tell people when they're starting out, if it feels like you're making it up, make it up. Okay. Okay, because chances are you're not making it up, but you think you are. So I'm gonna take a couple deep breaths and relax yourself because nerves are the enemy of mediumship. First thought, first feeling, do you have a man or a woman? Definitely a man. Okay, now I want you to bring him close. Ask him to come closer to you because we're gonna try to feel his personality. What kind of a personality does he have? He's a hard ass. And what makes you say that? I just like, 
am seeing him at a table, and he, he's just kind of like commanding the entire table. And this is just, okay. I don't know no, what this no. is. It's just, just in my mind, go I'm envisioning mm -hmm. glasses, like smaller circular, mm -hmm. like a prominent nose, and like gray kind of receding thin hair. What else about him? He has a booming laugh. He's like a big guy. Like he has like a presence and maybe a cigar? I mean, there's smoke. Is this sounding familiar to you? Very accurate in a lot of things. Um, the person you're describing is actually my stepfather. He did smoke, he smoked cigarettes. The laugh, he had this kind of laugh that was like, mm, like bassy. Like when he laughed, you, you felt it, even if you're in the other room. Just his presence was so large. Yeah, it's very accurate, man. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I literally just made things up, but I guess that's how it works. Why does there need to be a town of psychics? Why does there need to be a Casadega? I think that a lot of people are very intuitive, and I think that sometimes it's difficult for them being out in a world where people want to call them freaks or weirdos or the weird girl, and it's nice to be around like-minded people. I left when I was 18. I went across the country. I decided this wasn't it for me. I didn't want to be here any longer. I wanted to go to California. Then it was, my life was just hardship after hardship after hardship until I finally accepted, okay, I have to go back to Florida. I moved back here and it was almost like spirit constantly keeps bringing me back here because it's where I'm meant to be. There are gonna be so many people watching this video leaving comments like, nah, this is not it. These people are fake. Mm -hmm. What do you say to all the naysayers? It all comes down to if you believe in coincidence or not. And I don't. I think that they're perfectly entitled to their own opinion. And it doesn't harm me in any way, shape or form because um, I know what's true and what's real for me. And in the nicest way possible, I hope that they feel that healing that they need to, to maybe have a little bit more happiness. People are coming to you for answers and support and clarity. That's a pretty big responsibility. Do you feel that? I do. I do. And, you know, sometimes people come who need additional help. And I suggest to them that they should perhaps see a mental health therapist or um, see someone else who might be able to assist in a different way than I do. I had breast cancer in 2016 and I actually saw it like seven years before it happened. I actually saw my left breast blackened and then bam, seven years later, I get it. Were you scared to die? No. When you're facing mortality yourself, you then decide that everything is in divine order. We're we all leave in this earth plane one time or another. You keep saying earth plane. It makes it feel like it's a little less final. Death. Right. We continue. We most definitely do. We just lose our bodies for the next plane of existence. Spiritualists like Lori and Sydney believe that the continuity of life is proved through things like mediumship. But personally, I needed to see some physical evidence. Amen. 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 So I begged Lori to let me sit in on one of the camp's most sacred rituals, a table tipping. At first I was refused, but after a lot of simping, they finally agreed to let us film. I'm standing here in front of the Slater house. In just a second, we're gonna go in for a table tipping. I guess it's a version of a seance where we just put our hands on the table and if there's spirits there, they move the table. Obviously, it seems super spooky. When we came to Casadega, we didn't know if we were gonna get this. The physical stuff is heavily guarded by the camp and I'm assuming it's also pretty hard to fake for the cameras. So let's go check it out. My name is Reverend Dr. Philip T. Long. I am a medium teacher and healer in the Casadega camp. When we do table tipping, you normally put your palms and your fingertips on the table as lightly as you can. To raise the vibration, we normally sing a couple songs. I don't know if you know any songs. Usually. Well, we all know Jingle Bells, right? Jingle, jingle bells, bells, Jingle Bells, Jingle all the way. Row, 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 row your boat gently down, down. the stream. So, Spirit, show us a yes. 
I, I actually I feel felt like it was getting ready to tip. I kind yeah. of feel it. Yeah. Don't you? So. It's like a humming. Hmm. I also feel the humming, but I can't put my finger on where it's coming from. The wheels on the bus go round and round all through the town. Oh my gosh, do you feel it? Yeah, I feel it. There's a lot of energy. There is. I can feel it. It's building. I feel like someone's tapping you. Do you feel it? Yeah. Do you, Zach? Maybe. Yeah, you're not quite sure? I don't know what to Because you don't know what to expect. Yeah. It kind of seems like the spirits are a little camera shy. Do you think it might not happen? It's a possibility. Come on, spirit, spirit. you can Come do it. We know they can do <laughs> yeah. it. I mean, they were all over the place in here before. Yeah. At this point, it doesn't seem like any spirits are going to move this table, so we pivot to another exercise called transfiguration. The way it works is, if there's a spirit in the room, they'll secrete a blue mist called ectoplasm in front of the medium, so that way we can see a projection of who that spirit is on their face. So what we're looking for is changes in Lori's mm -hmm. face at this point. Getting changes to the lips, changes to the chin. It almost looks like a male spirit. It's like mustaches. I'm almost getting this like a, a Native American guy. Oh, that was kind of strange. Did you see that? Did you just see she actually flipped from one face to another face? Yeah. Did I, you see that? Mm -hmm. I, I do, so. It's almost like she was two different people. Done. Okay. Well, right? Did you see anything? I saw like shadows. I I still don't know what to look for. I'm okay, all so okay. new. You never know what gets picked up on camera either. Mm -hmm. Well, we tried. So the table didn't tip. It didn't really even move at all. There was just a little bit of a shaky table, which I actually think I can attribute to Reverend Phil because I snuck a few peeks and his hands were pulsing the table. Transfiguration, if you stare at anything in the dark for so long, of course you're going to see shadows move, and I definitely did. I'm not sure if I can say that it was definitively a spirit, but the psychics were convinced that the spirits were there and they just weren't giving it their all, so I guess we can leave it at that. I can't say that I'm leaving Casadega as a believer because their idea of evidence is strictly word of mouth. But I don't think that it matters. Casadega provides a home for people who not only believe in the beyond, but are shaped by it. People might find this freaky or even fake, but at the end of the day, I think a world with ghosts is a lot less scary than a world where nothing happens after we die. After we left, the psychics did their own table tipping and sent us a video. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Yeah, you're a different one. Uh, Dad, are you here? 